Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Elisa Magajon. I am HGO's Senior Education Manager and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our final Bauer Family High School Voice Studio Masterclass of the Year. We want to thank you for being with us as we've navigated our way through this virtual space and I'd like to take this moment to congratulate our teaching staff, Christopher Michel, Hector Vasquez and Alicia Johnny for their amazing and hard work and all of our seniors as they celebrate graduating this spring. In today's class, we will be highlighting the HGO Studio, whose mission is to provide comprehensive career development to young artists who have demonstrated potential to make major contributions to the field of opera. The studio's goal is to develop well-rounded professionals by providing the highest quality training combined with a wide range of performance opportunities. Mezzo-soprano Lindsay Kate Brown will return to the HGO studio in her third year as a studio artist in this upcoming season. She holds degrees from Rice University, Binghamton University, and Mansfield University of Pennsylvania. You can see her in our live outdoor performance of a Sound of Music sing-along just in a couple of weeks on May 8th at the University of Houston. I would like to welcome Lindsay into this space right now. Good morning, Hi, morning. what's up? Good morning, great to have you here with us today. Oh, thanks, Elisa. Well, we're really excited. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna be bringing in our students in just a minute. I wanna just give you space if you'd like to say anything before our students get started and then we'll invite in our first singer. Sure, well, I welcome everybody who's watching this today from their couches and from their rooms and living rooms. Um, I'm Lindsay, it's nice to virtually meet all of you and I am here to listen to some amazing singers and I am one opinion of many you know, and I am glad to offer any help and advice that I can give. But at the end of the day, I am here for them as a supplement to their already amazing teaching that they're getting. So I'm really excited to hear them and I welcome them to this safe space. And for those who are not singing, I fully encourage anybody on this Zoom call to write their praises and accolades to their colleagues after they're done singing because they can't hear you or see you clap right now. So any positive encouragement in the comments is definitely well, well appreciated. Yeah, and you are a shining example of a wonderful colleague who never holds back on their praise when they see good work done. So she's a great colleague. Um, I would like to invite our first singer, Sam Dill, into the space right now. I'm going to go off camera and allow the two of you to get started. Thanks for being here. All right, Sam. Hello, good morning. My name is Sam Dill, and today I will be singing O Thou That Tellest Good Tidings to Zion from Handel's Messiah. Behold 
hard to sing at 10 30 well it's hard to sing always but that's hard to sing at 10 30 in the morning congrats thank you <laughs> that's wild okay well hey sam i'm Lindsay. it's nice to meet you nice to meet you <laughs> okay so tell me tell me a little bit about how you thought that went what you liked what you think could have gone better tell me yeah um well first of all i liked my breath throughout i think um i think i did a a, a better job than i expected of the consistency of my breath, I tend to, when I get nervous, it kind of falls out. I get that. Um, one thing I know I could have done better, because I always struggle with this, is opening my mouth. Okay. Um, I kind of always tend to default to a more uh, closed jaw, which I know is not conducive to sure. singing. Okay. Great. Well, I mean, I well, I'm going to give you my thoughts and then we'll work on some stuff if that's cool, okay? Yeah. So first of all, I think your voice is extremely pleasing to listen to. Oh, like it, it's very even, it's a very lovely tone. I just feel like this is a perfect example for you. And I know that you study with Alicia and she like texted me this morning and was like, we love him. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's beautiful to listen to. I really like what you're doing. I think your coloratura is really good. You're getting that in tempo, which is really, really nice. Things I would like to see. I would love to see just a bit more direction in your longer lines. You have the notes down, you have the breath down, but I wanna see your phrasing happen. Mm. So we're gonna work a little bit. Is that cool? Yeah, totally. Okay, let us start from, I, it's gonna be funky because of not having a live pianist and having to do a recording. So some things might have to be acapella slash we'll make it work, okay? I have also some uh, timestamps like oh. marked down for like the, the number or the letters. Okay, killer. Can we start? I want to start at the very, very like the beginning. We can start right before A. All right. And I would love. I think you're doing a really good job of this, oh, the, and not letting it be oh, the, like a. Yeah. I think you're doing a really good job of that. Once you get past that, I really want you to think. Oh, thou that tellest good tidings to Zion. Think of where you're really going in that phrase. Um, right. Same thing through that first A, little A section. Can we do right there? Yeah. Killer. Oh, thou that tellest good tidings to Zion. I think that that was already much better. What I want to see and what I think will help you is if you anticipate, anticipate, good morning, anticipate the breath just a teeny bit more so that you don't feel like you have to, oh, thou. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Give yourself yeah. the ability to breathe in, set your anchor and go. Can we do the mm -hmm. same thing one more time? Yeah. Awesome. Good tidings to Zion. Good, keep going. Get thee up into the high mountain. O thou that tellest good tidings to Zion. Get thee up into the high mountain. Good, much better, much better. How does that feel for you? It definitely felt way more legato, like I wasn't yeah. like holding my breath or anything. Yeah, I mean, that is, it's funny, there are very few things that can't be tra traced back to the breath. Yeah. So, whenever I'm feeling a little funky about a certain aspect of my voice, I'm like, okay, what's my breath doing? Am I, mm -hmm. is my, 
initiation of breath correct? What is the onset look like? How am I using my breath? Is my breath even inconsistent? And that solves literally like 97.3% pro of the problem. Yeah. So I really like that for you. I would love to hit, if we could go to B really quickly, I just want to check something for you. So when you have this really long A, I love that you start it in straight tone and then add in the vibrato. I think that's a beautiful color choice, assuming it's a choice. Yes. 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 Okay. I was like, I shouldn't assume, but it's a, it's a cool choice and I really like it. I would love, even when it's in straight tone, to still think about that. I like the image of like the duck in the water. It looks really, really peaceful and calm, but underneath it's like. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, so I would love if you could, even when you're in straight tone, I would love if you could imagine that just happening in your brain so that you, when you go into vibrato and you finish that phrase off, that it goes all the way to mountain. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Let's try from B. All right. Um, Oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. It's weird when we don't have a pianist because we're like, let's just guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Try that one more time. All right. Um... Get the earth into the high So much better. So much. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Killer. Okay. I want to have you try something. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out, it's totally fine. I love this breath that you're taking. Get the up into the high mark. Right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Zoom just notified me. So are you playing music? No, girl, I'm singing. <laughs> but you're taking that breath right before the G sharp into the A, right? Yes. I want to have you try and see if you can make it to the end of the phrase from the mountain. Can you try that for me? Do, just totally yes. acapella. Don't worry about the piano. We can, we'll go back and try it with the piano, but I just want you to try that. So get the up. Get the up into the high If you take, because the A is not as long as the previous A, try it just for like, just for this experiment, try it completely in vibrato with no color of the straight tone, because right. I think that you might be wasting a little bit of air going into the straight tone. And that's part of re the reason you can't make the end of the phrase without that breath. So try it one more time. If it doesn't work, no worries. Okay. Get the up into the high mountain. Hey, that's better. That's something, yeah. I mean, like, obviously this is like a change that I'm asking in 14 seconds, you know what I mean? And so if it doesn't work the 100% exact, that's totally okay. And that's something you can aspire to do. I think I'm pretty confident when I sing this, I take a breath also. <laughs> I don't remember. I haven't sung this in a hot minute, <laughs> but I really like this for you. Okay. Can we keep going? Is that okay? Yeah, totally. Okay. Or do you want to try it with the piano without the breath? Uh, sure. We, we can try that. Let's try it. Um, and keep going. Yes. Just from like B? Just from B. Okay. Um, and as we keep going, I want you to think the same thing. Oh, thou that tell is good tidings to Jerusalem. Really going to the apex of the phrase, using your okay. breath to go where you need to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Close! 
Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Thou that tellest good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Much better, keep going. The cities of Judah, say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God, behold. So I have no idea how much time I have. So Aliza, just shout to me when it's time for me to stop talking um, because I have no idea. So, okay. I really, really like that for you. I know that it wasn't hundred percent perfect. And I mean, it's never gonna be perfect. You know what I mean? But like, it wasn't hundred percent perfect but it's definitely something that you can aspire to do. Like, I think it's totally feasible in your range if you just work it that way. Yeah. And make sure that even though, even if you are feeling like you are running out of breath the worst thing that any singer can do is I'm running out of breath and I try to suck everything in and then this gets really tight and gets really hard. And it's just like, if you're starting to run out of breath, I want you to always feel like, and I would stand up, but I'm in pajama pants. I'm gonna be honest about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I When you breathe and when you're releasing your air, I want you to continue to feel like you are rooted, continue mm. to feel like you are in the floor because the worst thing we can do is to go and right. tighten up. So when you get to that point and you're working on that on your own, just really think about that. Think about, okay, we're getting to the end of the breath. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to expand. We're going to keep ourselves out. We're going to expand and keep going. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Moving on from that. Um, I wanted to look at, I love the, oh, thou that tells good tidings to Jerusalem. I love the lift up thy voice with strength much better this time. I thought that was more successful when yeah. you go to strength. I know that you want it to musically embody strength. Yeah. I fully understand that. Just be careful that when you do strength, that you don't grab onto the strength because mm. then you go. Here. Right. So just for my own existence without, you don't have to do it with the piano. Um, lift up. That's your first. Can you do just lift up thy voice with strength? That's all I want you to do. Yeah. Lift up. Thy voice with strength. You feel the difference with that? Totally, yeah. You can you can have strength simply from the rolled R. Yeah. You do not need to feel like you have to strength. Right. You know what I mean? Because you totally. we just want to grab here and then <laughs> cause a scene. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Right. Okay. So, and we're gonna keep going from there. Um, don't be not afraid. Much better. I would love to start from D. And you've got these the these weird jumps that Handel put in, right? Sing yeah. unto the cities of Judah. And like, in my voice, I, there's like a clear shift. Judah, <laughs> right? But, <laughs> but you can smooth that out a little bit. I think that you have the ability to go into that part of your voice without feeling a ka-chunk, as mm. it were. Um, so can we start right around D and try yes, that yeah. out? Yes. Oh. No, no worries. <laughs> funky when you have to start in the middle of the piece. No worries. Yeah. Say unto the cities of Judah. Say unto the cities of Judah. Behold your God. Behold your God. Say unto the cities of Judah. you do it that way oh, it's completely more free and like just 
just going out a lot easier. Yeah, isn't it wild? Yeah. <laughs> I want that same thing to apply. Um, your God. So again, for me, that's like a little shift in placement for me. But yeah. for you, I want you to kind of feel like, and this is super metaphorical and super strange, <laughs> two minutes. Okay, super metaphorical and super strange. When you're going, your God. I don't want you to feel like they're separate beings. Okay, I want you to feel like there's almost like a, uh, I'm not a metaphorical person, but like a <laughs> mythical, like little like staircase. And I want you to take your breath that way. Right. Behold your God, as opposed to your God and having it be just like a separate entity. Can we try? Right. Um, right there. You can try. Do just you yeah, no worries. Behold your God. Behold. That was keep much going? better. Yeah, you can keep going. Okay. Right. Behold your God. Good. How does that feel okay. to you? Definitely a lot better. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely was kind of just like, here, plop. Yeah. Well, it's hard because he doesn't write it in the most effective way. Like, sorry, I love you, Handel, but like, let's be honest. You know what I mean? Um, I want to take it very quickly to just the, there's a million things that we could talk about, but I think you're, and the glory. I thought that was really good. Again, just that similar, keep the air spinning all the way through and have a direction of where you want that color tour to go, but it's very clean. Mm. So I really like that for you. I want to do just the very end. Yes. So if we can start from G, and I love the, he's risen, he's risen. Thought that was great, but I want you to try the glory of the Lord. And then I have to let you go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh. 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 He's for the end of that make sure you're re i would anchor a teeny bit towards e it's going to help you yeah. keep the tongue high so that when you go up in the coloratura that your tongue doesn't get too low yeah okay hmm. any questions for me we can chat afterwards no worries but uh, no. okay well we will chat after you are amazing i'm so glad to get to hear you and congratulations that Thank was awesome. you so much. of course bye sam bye Hello, come to me. I think it's Jude. <laughs> yes, it is. What's up, dude? What's up? I feel like I'm really excited about this because I haven't heard you sing in over a year. <laughs> so, okay, tell me what we're doing. All right. My name is Jude Watt. I'll be singing Odel Mio Mato Ben by Stefano Donaldi. Ben, you're 
speranze ma c'è quel fan che ha mein fan e da piangere And then it, the next one's like frozen. You're like, da, 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 da. <laughs> good job. Okay. Talk to me about things you thought you did well, things you thought you could improve on. Give me, give me the scoop. Um, I feel like what I could have done a lot better is my approach to those high notes. I mm-hmm. mean, um, like the macerko in van, kiamo in van, and also uh-huh. at the end. Uh-huh. Um, so now that you've given me the criticism first, I need you to give me two positive things. Two positive things. Two positive yeah. things. This is a very singery thing, I understand. It's hard for us to give ourselves criticism, like positive criticism mm-hmm. specifically, because we're always looking at the negative things. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so two positive things. Okay. Um... <clears throat> oh man, I really don't know. Um... I guess I would kind of say, um, like, I think my breath, like the mm-hmm. amount of breath that I took uh, and how much I took in, yes. I think was uh, pretty all right. I think I did a good job with that. Good. Um, what about your interpretation of character? Um, I think I did okay with that. I think good. I did all right with that. I think you did pretty more than all right. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, well, I'm going to talk to you about a few things. So things that I really liked. I like your artistic sensibility. I think that you have a really good musical ear. I don't know if anybody's ever talked to you about that or said anything in that regard, but I feel like you relate to and can convey musical ideas very well, which is awesome. Cause that's not something you can teach. You know, that's something you either like for lack of better words, you either have or you don't. So that's really awesome. I mean, especially if you want to go into music, you know, that's what we got to do. We got to convey a message. I thought that your dramatic ability was really, really great. I thought in general, the Italian was really good. There's a couple little things that we'll like just touch on just to like check. Um, and I really, I really do think that you are getting the message across, which is very much the point of singing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I am a huge advocate for technique. I think that technique is the foundation of all singing and without a solid technique, we can't really do our jobs very well, but technique is not everything. And if you stand on stage and you're like a technique robot and you don't say anything, then it becomes one boring and two less effectful. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I really, really liked it. I don't know how your piano um, like thing is set up to be able to like work with piano on things. I don't know if you have things marked or time stamped or whatever, but something I want to work on with you. Did you happen to grab a straw by any chance? Um, I did not. Grab it's okay. I have other options. <laughs> <laughs> I have other methods. If there is no straw present, um, I'm going to teach you something called the cupo. Do you, have you ever talked about this with your teacher before? Um, no. Okay. So basically what the cupo is, is it was something designed by a teacher from way, way back in the day. And what it does is it kind of helps you set up what's going on in here. So basically what happens is we close our mouth and we make kind of like a puffy cheek face. Like our face is like kind of full of food, but not so far that we're like, right. Just yeah. Like I can still talk. It sounds funny, but like I can still talk that way. And I want you to sing just the first two phrases. Um, I think that's what key we were in. And I want you to sing it in this cupo because I want it to like, I want you to feel what it feels like when you sing some of these higher notes in that space. Yeah, can you do that for me? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> How does that feel to you when you do that? Um, I felt like I clipped that um the top note just a little bit, but it felt um it felt better. Yeah, good. <laughs> Step one. Um, it, did feel, <laughs> it did feel a lot more like easier. Like it, it kind of like set me up that, to where those notes became suddenly like just more accessible. Yeah. So what that does in like, and I won't get into like super annoying technical terms, but what it does is it like the, what we're doing here kind of ends up happening here. We are allowed, we are allowing ourselves to take the pressure off of our vocal folds and put it here. You try it one more time and I want you to really feel when you take your inhalation, I want you to feel nice and low and to feel the expansion. But when you go to that first jump, it stays in it instead of, yeah. Can you try that for me? Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah good so this is something i literally do this on every piece of music and it's people don't know that this cupo thing exists i mean some people do for sure but like i do this on every piece of music i do it when i warm up when i don't have a place to warm up like i'm in a subway i do that all of the time it's so useful because it teaches you a nice posture in the mouth and it teaches you just like nice reflection of breath mm. so take that same thing and what is your vowel of choice if you're working on a vowel? Um, um, I mean, like it changes the, the if I go higher, like I want to start doing a different vowel whenever I go mm -hmm. there. What vowel do you use when you're higher? Um, kind of like a, kind of like a, an I umlaut or like a, okay. like I and O something like, like that. E. E, yeah, kind of yeah. Because e? yeah. Can we do this whole phrase on an E? Uh -huh. That's hard for me. That's low for me. Okay, go. <laughs> go ahead. So now, does that feel different than what you did when you performed it? Yes. You're like big smiling because you know it's good. 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 So when we go and we take it to the words, I want you to still think the E in your sound. I'm not necessarily like we're not shifting everything towards an E, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go to um, that you don't allow yourself 
and let things fall out this way. I want you to really think here back. Can you try just those two lines one more time? Yes, yes. Um, uh, from Odell? Yeah, use your words. How does that feel to you? Um, I felt like um, whenever I started going to the words on the, uh, I went back to like how I was singing it before we did that whole like mouth. Sure. Um, uh, yeah. Well, because the thing is, is you have to find that mix between going full and and because then your tongue's like too far back and that's like a whole weird technical thing and we don't have to go too far into technique, but that's something that you can do for this entire song is like that kupo feeling because it's going to take the pressure off of here. It's going to make sure that you're engaged in the lower half and it's going to allow you to just sing through with legato. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we, okay. <laughs> I want to do, we're obviously going to get to some of the high, like the high, um, da -da -da -da. but can we use this, this first verse up until then? And I want you to try on the cupo, and when you feel ready, switch into words. Okay. Okay. Uh, throw your music on, sing it with the panano. Okay. All right. As you're waiting, think about your inhalation. Start your inhalation a little bit early. It's okay. It's okay. So <laughs> I really liked what that was doing for you. And then when you opened up on Lunji, did you feel that that was just different for you? Those Fs? Um, yes. You like that. I want to advise you. And part of it, I think is the turtleneck. We look lovely today, but <laughs> part of it is I just did when you are doing the cupo, just to be careful that we don't tuck the chin under and end up like turtling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So just be cognizant of that, just so that you don't like over overdo. Allow it to still be relaxed in the jaw. But I think that overall that that was way better. I mean, it was still really good the first time, but like this is just more consistent. Do you yes, know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for is a consistency of sound so that we then can break away and create the art and the drama that you're really good at doing. Daya? Okay. So... I really, really like that for you. Can we attack, not attack. Can we work on these five minutes? Thank you. Can we work on the, can we just work on those a little bit? <clears throat> so I'm going to use my uh, piano on my phone to give myself a note here. Um, okay. Can we go from, from there. Good. Good. 
now that was already better than the first time we did it. Yes, you agree? Yes. Okay. I want you to be cognizant of that Zay doesn't go say. I want you to already be thinking that vowel that you and your teacher work on okay. because that's what's going to help you go yes. can you do same thing yes um, uh, okay good but the core of that's better yes yes agreed okay <laughs> so for anybody who doesn't know this i don't know who's watching this right now but for anybody who doesn't know this teaching and being a tenor is harder than any other voice part and i'm not saying that because i mean you're doing an amazing job but every other voice part kind of sings in the area in which that they speak and you do not so you have this weird advantage you have this weird disadvantage that you like are here but then you have to like somehow sing up this way and you're like how do we do that because you have to like carry the chest up and it's just like a million different things that could go wrong so you're doing really really well like i've heard some tenors your age and it's wild but <laughs> okay so let's just attack this a little bit more so can we change instead of certo the ch sound can we think of the like j just for a second I want you to feel that when you do certo, that it doesn't go certo, that it's c -j -j. use that voice consonant to work. Um, same place. Okay. Okay. <sighs> So how does that feel? <laughs> um, I felt like um, I still could have had like a little bit more support behind it. Sure. But adding in that like J, uh, mm -hmm. making it voiced rather than just a ch, uh, yeah. I think that really helped. Um, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. funny because I don't think anybody who is listening who like other, like obviously now, because I told them that you will sing a J instead of a ch, you know what I mean? But I don't think anybody who's listening to you in an audition panel is gonna be like, girl that was not a ch you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like they're not gonna know they're not gonna know that was my quote of a tiktok <laughs> um so <clears throat> i really like that for you i think that's gonna make it easier for you and then chiamo if you almost think so the opposite of k is g k yeah. if you think a little bit of g there moin moin van that that will help you as well i'm gonna have you do it one more time and then I think we're going to do the, actually, can we do from the beginning through there? Okay. Trying all these things since we only have two minutes. Mm -hmm. Go with the piano? Yes, please. Good deal. Um, Go to Koopa whenever you want. Use the words whenever you want. Whatever you feel like you need. Oh, I'm 
obviously I just threw 7 million in two things at you, but I really think that's like the right track for you. Yeah. Just I think be so careful too. that as you're, you know, exploring this new area and continuing to work on the, you with your teacher, mm-hmm. that it stays connected to the breath always. Cause I thought that was excellent. And you're right. That's the one piece that's now missing is just the connection to the lower half. And it, it's like golden, like ready to sing. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Um, we can always talk afterwards, but yes, yes. Okay. Not that I can think of right now. Okay. Well, great job. And I will see you in the Q and a portion and we can chat. (laughs) All right. All right. Bye Jude. Thank you. Samantha. Hi, sorry. I'm having some camera trouble. It seems (laughs) no worries. No worries. It happens. I can hear you, which is like... Yeah, hold okay. on. Let me try um, unplugging it and then plugging it back in. I have a webcam, so... Oh, okay. No worries at all. Here we go. Yes, there she is. Okay. Hey. Hi, my name is do you, Um, Do you want Samantha or Sam? Samantha. I actually like Samantha better. Got it. Introduce, do all the things. Hi, my name is Samantha, and today I'll be singing Si Me Ver Ave Des Ailes by... Awesome. great okay talk to me about this positive things things to work on all that good stuff well um definitely that um okay two positive things positive um, I think always my focus was really good and like i really like connected to, like the words and the text um like i could feel each emotion and it felt like each word was kind of coming from me instead of just me kind of reciting the text i guess Absolutely. and um I think except for, and I think my, my uh, dynamic contrast was good. Like the sections that were meant to be like, like louder were loud and the sections that were meant to be quiet were intimate, were yes. uh, quieter. Good. Um, one thing I want to work on, um, I guess just though, like those kind of um, like, uh, like upward motion that leads to those like kind of sure. big high notes, those big kind of ease. Because for that, I think I tended to put too much weight on my voice. And so sure. when I get to those high notes, they get kind of difficult and laborious. So sure. um, that's one thing I definitely want to work on with this piece. Awesome. Well, we're going to hit a lot. We're going to hit all those things. So awesome. I think from, so from my standpoint, I think that you, again, are extremely musical. I think that this is a good piece for you. I saw, it's funny. I saw the key and I was like, ooh, she's in <laughs> <laughs> I was like excited and I was like, yes. Um, I thought you handled all the low really, really well. Um, 
and I, I definitely see what you're saying about going up to these higher things and being able to just feel comfortable, make sure we're not taking too much weight up. And I totally get that. And we'll go, we'll go through that stuff and we'll talk about it. Sound Great. good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So starting from the beginning, um, I want to just, I think your French is really, really good. Thank you. Like, it's very clear that you have worked on the French Two, Can I give you two little things just yeah. about it? So <clears throat> I would love on any of your ooh vowels, you are giving me ooh for days. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're giving me that ooh. Just be careful that when you do your ooh, that other things don't close down with it. Even oh. though it's an ooh, ooh, it still resonates. Okay. So just be cognizant of that. Um, and then when you have schwa's, we know what a schwa is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Calm it. Um, <clears throat> people call it the neutral vowel. People say it's the uh. Like people say it's uh, like, uh, like there's lots of different explanations of what a schwa is. Nobody can really agree. So, but what I like to think of for myself is that I like to almost have it be a bit closer to eh, just eh with a bit around because especially in these lower things, um, if I do, you don't get as much resonance. You have to have it just be open a teeny bit just so that you still get the line. Okay. So we will like, we'll go through it and talk about that. But can I hear just the first like two phrases? Is that okay? Yeah. I want you to think as we were talking about not bringing weight up, I want you to just continue thinking, can I have you sing all of this on an E vowel? Yeah, sure. That's the vowel actually usually. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's try just the first like two phrases on an E. Okay. With the accompaniment or without? Whichever you prefer. Probably without because I, 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 I can focus more. Got when you. Like, I don't have it going on in the background. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, there we go using my terrible phone piano. Good, already better. The phrasing itself is already better. Can I have you, as you're doing this, because it's in this specific part of your voice, can I have you think a bit more round in general? Okay. So, Instead of, can I have you think? Ooh, I have not warmed up today. That's why. <laughs> I cannot tell. <laughs> okay, let's try that. Yeah, same thing. Just allow yourself to be a bit more round, okay? Okay. top feel a little bit better yes it makes it it makes it so much easier to yeah get to those. yeah absolutely so the thing is is that when we switch to the actual words the reason that i in my opinion it feels a bit easier is because of the vowel choice the e allows us to um to remain more in the head so we it's harder for us to carry weight up on an e than it is on a ah uh, or an O or anything like that. And you have votre jardin, like yeah. <laughs> lots of low vowels, right? Yeah. So when you're singing this, I want you to think in your brain E to just follow the E. And so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we try that yes. on words? Just okay. nice, rounded, following the E. Okay. How does that feel for you? It felt so much more resonant, also just clearer in general. Like it felt like it was more forward. Yeah. No, I agree. I like that much better. We're going to keep going. Um, as we go into um, watch, just be careful. 
that we aren't called so that it you do have something to sing on as it were okay um right from there Okay. Did you notice a difference in your schwa from and uh, zelle? Yes, I, I, I almost I, I closed it up first and then I changed it and it was like, um, like a really? humongous difference. Oh, this is a thing. Can we try that one more time? Yes. <laughs> Better. Good. We're going to keep going. As we keep going, something I want you to think about and something that I struggle with still, like as, you know, a 29 year old, like trying to like do this, I guess, um, is just making sure that as we're speaking the words that we don't let our jaw get involved so that we don't feel like we have to chew because you you have the diction down you know how she goes you know what i mean yeah. so don't feel like you have to over pronunciate in order to create the sound just ride on the air and say the words okay That's all you gotta do. Can we keep going? Better keep going. yeah how's that for you that felt so much better and i even like focused on putting like i focused on like keeping e on that mm -hmm. ascending measure up to the, like, the high e and yeah. it was like it, it, it was it um it wasn't as heavy and it yeah it was just so much easier than it was so was. it was so vibrant it had the like it had the resonance that it required it was great i would offer you as you're going up foyer those three are all higher vowels so that is like use those use okay. those to know that you're going into that place and you're going to start to ascend into like this area which is very metaphorical and strange as i say it but you know what i mean you're ascending up here so can we do uh just there water for yes mm, right uh, better yes yeah, so much better yeah. it's so funny because i like you wouldn't know that that's something that could easily solve that problem. I'm, you're, I'm sure that your teacher, like you guys have talked about it, you know what I mean? But like you, you yourself, it's hard for you to know when you need something like that because you can't hear what your true voice sounds like. You know what I mean? You just have to trust your technical ability and what you can do, you can do, you know? So I really like that for you. So now the, when we go back, when we, or when we do the third verse, it's the opposite, right? You have to go. Um, it's much quieter, yes? Yes. <laughs> Can I have you try the kupo that I did with Jude? And just try this feeling of. Maybe from. So just not like not on the words, but using that. Not word. on the words. Do you so with Jude? I did this thing called a kupo, which is basically like we put our lips together, 
we give ourselves a little bit of space in the mouth. It's kind of like flabby jaw, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we sing inside our mouths. There's not a ton of pressure here. It's just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try it out. See if you can do it. That's already better. I want you to, instead of singing the words in your brain, I want you to just do it on a sweet, like a sweet ooh. Because then it gives you that consistent line. Can you try that one more time for me? Yes. Do you see how that allows you to go into almost a different type of voice? Yeah. That is what my teacher and I refer to as like the tilt, the tilt of the larynx. Long story. Um, <laughs> when we, can we do uh, now on the words with that feeling of when you go, uh, that it's that same feeling of just sweetness. Yeah. How's that feel? A lot better. For yeah, sure. feels yeah. good. Because I used to get so nervous, like surrounding that like like little piano E, because I was mm -hmm. so scared. I'm like, oh, you know, quiet high note. Yeah. But that really helped me like kind of get around it better and mm -hmm. like get the anxiety away from it. Whenever I get nervous about high notes, I do two things. Number one, I use whatever the phrase is as an exercise, and I go up and up and up so that the high note is no longer a high note. You know what I mean? Because I've yeah. just done a fifth higher. So I worry, I think about it in that function, but then two, I feel like I, the one exercise that I use all the time and we can do it right now is we would use a straw or we would use what I call the dentist drill, which is a V sound. Can you try that for me? And you put it, you do thirds in your voice. So I would do. And allow myself to feel this. Can you try that for me? Good. Now, just for the sake of existence, can we try? Uh, Just try that on your. Okay. Do you feel that? Do you feel that like little like? There? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. That's like that's the start of you. You already naturally want to tilt. That's a good start to you wanting to be like. Instead of the full. Two different things, two different mechanisms going on, like two things happening there. So anyway, we have less than two minutes. Um, can I, do you have a timestamp on your thing? Uh, no, but if, I can probably find it. I, mean, I ideally point. just want to hear this last page. Okay. Here we go. Okay. 
sorry. I started it too early. No, it's okay. But let's yeah. just talk about that. That was really, really nice. Yeah. I want you to just have confidence in the fact that's going to happen. Be careful on your je so it doesn't pull down from below. Je, because that'll give you extra weight that you don't need. Think of it. Je, je. Think of it on the same note, if not above. That will help you with that as well. Okay. okay. All right. I think I have, to, I think I'm going to get kicked out. So <laughs> do you have any questions for me? No, not right now. Thank you so awesome. much for this. Of course. Anytime. Um, and I think we have like some question and answer thingy. So if you think of anything, we can do that. Sounds good. Awesome. Great job, Samantha. Thank you. What a fantastic class. That oh, was really? so delightful watching you teach, Lindsay. We've all heard you sing so beautifully and it's just so lovely to watch you function as a teacher in this space. I'm going to invite all of our students to come back and go ahead and turn on your cameras, please. And while you're doing that, um, Lindsay, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about your journey through college and uh, into the space that you are now with the studio and about your teaching as well. So if you can kind of just talk about where you are in your state with um, performance and teaching and the journey you got here. Yeah, of course. So I originally went to college to be a choral director, to be a college choir teacher. And in my very first voice lesson, which wasn't until I got to college, actually, my voice teacher was like, have you ever considered opera? And I was like, dude, I've seen one show and I was in fifth grade. It was La Boheme. I remember nothing except there was like Paris and croissants. Like, I don't remember anything. And so uh, from there, I like went to my library at Mansfield University and we had a really, really solid CD collection. And so I just started listening to operas and started taking out a bunch of different things, any from Handel to Wagner to Reich to like anything I could find, I would just listen to. And I really fell in love with it. And so at the end of my freshman year, I applied to be a performance major and then was denied um which is like wild thinking that like now I'm like doing what I'm doing but like I got denied and so I was really sad about it and then that kind of made me realize that it was something that I really really wanted because I cared so much that I was so upset that I didn't get in so over the summer uh between my freshman and sophomore year I worked really really hard and practiced every day and kept everything together and then ended up applying halfway through my sophomore year for the performance program and got in. So I finished my degree in performance and ed at Mansfield and did my student teaching and all that stuff. And then kind of had to decide if I wanted to pursue education or performance. Um, and I decided to go the performance route because I knew that I love to teach. I mean, I love teaching, but if I were to go into a teaching profession full time, I probably would have gotten stuck there and just wanted, just been like happy and comfortable with that. Um, because obviously I like to work with people and help them. So I went the performance route, went to Binghamton University for my master's, where I also was a like resident artist with their regional opera company, Tri-Cities Opera there. And then auditioned to Rice University with an artist diploma on a whim because I heard Dr. King was good and I heard the school was good, knew nothing about Rice or Dr. King. And the next, the day after my audition, he asked if I wanted to go to Rice. And so I did. And then went from Rice to HGO. So I come this May will be the first time I've not been in school since I was four. So <laughs> I'm really excited I'm to see what that's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> A whole new world is about to, uh, you're about to explore. Absolutely. Wow. So that's an incredible journey with a lot of decisions you had to make along the way. I'm wondering if any of our students would like to comment on that or ask some questions about that. Yeah, please anything. Go ahead, Sam. Hi, yeah, um, I had a question about your performance opportunities in college as a singer and how maybe if you wished there were like more of them or like, I, I guess kind of what experiences did you gain for them from them that you feel really shape your experience uh, today? Sure. So both in my undergrad and grad, um, they were both very, very small state schools. And so the, there were some performance opportunities, not a ton, but there were also not too many students. So I got, ended up with a, a fair chunk of performance opportunities through my undergrad and grad. Um, I, this is like an offshoot, but I'm a huge advocate for 
um, schools that you one, like the teacher and two, are going to be able to perform because I feel like I was, I don't want to say ahead of my peers, but I was ahead of my peers because I had the performance opportunities in undergrad and grad school. But if you don't get, you know, like as with Sam being a specialty voice um, or just in general, if you don't get a ton of performance opportunities, make your own. You know what I mean? Like plan a recital, like plan, like a one person work, like do, do things on your own, because if you can't get them through the school or talk to the school and see if you can get it as like a special thing, um, because any performance opportunity is beneficial. Oh, if I can lift that message up, that is huge. And yeah. even at Houston Grand Opera, we hire artists to do their own kinds of projects for our teaching arts program. So yes, key information. Make your own work, people. That's great advice. I'd love to hear from some of our other students. Yeah, please. Jackie, go ahead. Yeah, I don't have a particular question for you at the moment, but um, I just wanted to say that your story is incredibly inspiring. I just really like the, um, the mantra of just going after what you want and like you realize that you knew what you want and then you kept going for it because I'm finding a lot of difficulty doing that um, sometimes in my own life. And I just really appreciate that. Well, thank you for saying that. I am a firm believer that everybody, everybody's path is very different. And sometimes people make it seem like you have to go to the biggest and best schools in order to succeed, or you have to, you know, study with this teacher, or you have to go do these summer programs, or you have to do these things. And while those things can be beneficial sometimes, that's not the only way to succeed. And um, I'm a big believer that each person can achieve their own version of success by just working really hard. So, yeah. And thank you. I think we'll have time for one more question. Sure. Brianna. Uh, I apologize for the wacky get up. It's prom day, so I have to get ready before my friends come over. Well, I am not but mad. Go <laughs> Um, I wanted to know, I will be a freshman in college this fall. Um, I wanted to know what should I expect when I get there? Because I will be majoring in music. So just like, I don't know what to pretty much expect. Sure. Can I ask a follow-up question really quickly? Where do you go to school right now, Brianna? Like my high school? Yeah. Uh, Angleton High School. Okay. So just so I like can get that in my brain. So when you go to school as a music major, you are going to be surrounded by a lot of people who are just as like weird and nerdy as you are. And that's really awesome. Like I was able to find people that were interested in the same type of things as I am, but then, I mean, they obviously had other interests too, and that was cool. And when you go in as a freshman, it's going to be a little hard because you're so, you know, like in your school, you're most likely the best, if not one of the best singers at your school. That's just like, it is what it is, you know? And you're gonna go into your college and you're gonna be surrounded by people who are also the best people at their school as well. And you can kind of take two paths with that. You can either A, see that and be like, oh, like this is really hard. I, you know, I'm struggling. Or you could take the opposite and say, you know what? I recognize and I know that this person is a little bit better than me on this one aspect. That's a great motivation for me to get better at that aspect. Um, so for example, I was not very good at languages. Languages were my, my biggest um, default, my biggest like issue. And there were people who, you know, who had taken voice lessons for six years and could sing in four languages. And I was like, girl, I can barely speak, like speak English. So I had to work really, really hard to get my diction on en point, as it were. So, you know, just use it as motivation and just lean on the people that are there and soak up every single thing that you're in even if it's the 8 a.m theory class that you don't want to be in and you're doing counterpoint and you don't want to be there like it's valuable in some way so <laughs> just take it take everything that you you know you have those four years take it and keep it because you won't get those four years again thank you yeah of course such wonderful advice of uh awesome masterclass. I encourage all of you to go back and rewatch it. She said some 
amazing, great things. Uh, so each of our students, I'm sure, would want to be able to follow up with you individually as well. So we'll make sure we keep that connection. I want to thank everybody who's been watching us online today. We're going to say goodbye to our online audience if our whole class can wave goodbye. And thank you for being with us on a virtual setting for an entire season. Your support's been awesome.